viewers hello and welcome to the next chapter with me kevin frederick this is our second show for the year 2022 and just to let you know that we are coming live via the gs television and social media platforms that is facebook and youtube we are also live on the ministry of health facebook page party grenada mikey live now grenada MTV, GBN, and a host of other social media platforms. This morning, my guest is Dr. Carl McIntosh. And Dr. McIntosh, as you know, is, first of all, a gynecologist, <laughs> very much experience under her belt. And she's also our director of hospital services, a post she has um, held for quite a number of years. And um, she's here to, to talk to us this morning about a number of, of upgrades, you know, um, access, equipment, services, and some of the good stuff that sometimes we, we, we don't often hear too much, but we will also address some of your concerns, and she will tell us a lot about what is taking place at hospitals throughout the length and breadth of Grenada. Likewise, what you can expect this coming year. Dr. McIntosh, thank you so much for um, accepting the invitation, and I'm glad that you're here to share with us this morning. Well, Kevin, as always, thank you and Happy New Year. It's always good. You know, starting off the new year, it's good. This is a good point of just starting in and seeing where we are and where we're going. Thanks. So mm -hmm. uh, tell me, um, how things over at the hospital? I know that you've been doing quite a lot um, last year. Um, we have been highlighting a number of the projects that were ongoing. Phase two is like, well, almost... Um, um, filled with the offices and so on and yes. i know that's where we, we are doing our, our our pcr covid testing so it means that um phase two has come quite a long way and we have a number of machines i think but you you tell us what's taking place okay so first before we even just start i first want to say thank god that we got through 2021 and we're into 2022 and that is setting the stage for us for 2022 because with 2021 with the covid surge and the deaths that occurred and all that needed to be done. The team that we had, which includes our ministers, Honorable Delma Thomas, and Honorable Nino Steele, our permanent secretaries, Ms. St. Paul and Ms. Isaac, my, my co-colleagues, my director of medical service, uh, my deputy director, director of nursing, all of that, and my health service administrators. As a team, with our staff and with the people on the ground and under the guidance of the governance of Grenada, we're able to say to not only get through 2021, but help to make sure that we set the foundation for this. And so I really wanted to say thank you, thank God for that. You know, there's a lot of us that didn't make it through, mm -hmm. but those of us that were able to make it through, whether we're sick and be able to have the facilities, have the vaccinations, all of these things available to us, I think it's accomplishment that should be said. So it's not me, it is us that did that. So now coming into what are we doing for 2022? Wow. So um, I will start first with the outer hospitals yes. and come back into the general hospital, which is like the mother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you starting first, I start first with Richmond Home, which is a nursing home. And if people remember from the years back, it has had a lot of difficulties, but now it's a smart home. It actually underwent construction. Now all the staff are back there and the patients are back there, both male and female, and it's a beautiful site now at this point. Um, a lot of the different things that's continuing to do is like the nursing home is adding on its nursing station, having private curtains to privatize each patient in their area, as well as increasing the staff. That is key for Richmond Home and for people, there's still no visitors, but the people there, I think there's just a, bre a breath of sunshine for them. Um, for Mount Gay, you know, the psychiatric hospital, one of the th key things that we're saying for 2022 and moving on is to put mental health in the forefront for people to be more comfortable to talk about mental health and mental disease and how do you manage it as every other disease that is present. And so for Mount Gay, what they're doing one of the key things that they did is that they have blocked off an area for COVID patients so they can manage them themselves. They also are also putting in um, the laundry services, which is something people may say, what is that? But I'll tell you all these minor things, which you may say, well, what are we talking about that for? But that's major for us, okay? As well as renovating and putting up fencing to secure the patients that are on site. For Princess Alice Hospital, well, Princess Alice Hospital is gonna to try to become the next hospital for General Hospital. 
It is taking on services so that we can now say we decentralize all services at the general hospital and bring it up to Princess Alice Hospital. And so they're opening up by the end of this year, or the end of this month, rather, they're operating theater. So they could start doing services on site. One of the key things as well that they're doing is to develop a staff lounge so that staff have a place for them. This is one thing that we learned from 2021 is to show appreciation for our people on the ground, to give them a chance to just breathe, to give them a chance understanding that they too had deaths in their family. They too had to deal with COVID. And so we need to help them to get through what's going on as well as their imaging. And, you know, we go through all of that discussion about imaging. Um, we're still developing and trying to get the XR6000 that's presently there back up and running, and that's still a process, but there's also a new one to come. And so that is one that's in the 2022 era that's coming in, as well as making sure that they too have laundry and they will have soon a new ultrasound machine to provide services up at their site. Mm -hmm. Then Princess Royal Hospital, and you know, that's dear, near and dear to my heart because it's Karakou and that's Karakou and P.T. Martinikins. And we always got to recognize the resilience of the people because they are separate from Grenada, but yet have the same things that are going on. Princess Royal Hospital is now a smart hospital and looks beautiful. In fact, they now have intercom service so they can play music during the day for the patients over the intercom, which is rather nice. They also have their x-ray machine that is there with the table and the bucky so they can start, soon start to provide services on site at the Princess Royal Hospital, as well as putting up the fencing and expanding their isolation war by putting in the sinks, etc., and being able to come a little bit more self-reliant um, and handling their patients there before sending them across to the general hospital. So those are some of the things that are happening across hospital services outside of the general hospital, okay? And then now we come to General Hospital. Well, we've been talking and talking and talking about phase two, phase two. Ever since I came in in 2018, it's like, when is phase two going to open? What's going on with that? Well, we're now moved in. The third floor has been fully occupied in the sense with administration, with our medical records. Um, we also doing conferences there. We have a nursing assistant program that's going on, as well as allowing people that come up to do a variety of different services up on site. So our third floor is in place. Our second floor with lab still has some more construction to go, but most of the equipment's on site. And as you said, the PCR testing is going on on site and people can come up and wait to have other tests done at that site. And we're continuing to move people over. Once we move them fully over, then we can start saying that we can address lab services at Princess Alice and Princess Royal. Okay, and then hmm, A and E and the ground floor, we still need to make sure that we have the connection of the corridor back to the general hospital to allow for patients to have that direct transport. Mm -hmm. At this present time, we're completing one portion of the corridor. That's the corridor from phase two to the kitchen. That one is underway right now and should be completed within the next four to six weeks. That would allow for communication from for the nurses to be able to walk across into their administrative offices, which is on top of the kitchen. And then they will start the completion of from the kitchen to the general hospital. And once that's done, be able to say, we can move over A&E &E and start being able to transfer patients directly across. And, and, and Doc, when we say from the kitchen, I don't want persons out there to be thinking, well, okay, we are passing nurses and patients through the kitchen, but meaning that there is a separate gangway that will take you from phase two over to the main um, um, nursing area. Exactly. That's You're absolutely yeah. on point. Right. It's like if you travel, if you went to JFK or Miami or any of the Atlanta or any of the airports, you know how you have to walk through this corridor That's to get right. across. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Right. It's the corridor that you're walking through and it passes these different areas and there's entryways for people to go in and out right. at different points in the corridor. Good. You're absolutely on point. Thank you for that. Um, we also have imaging, mm -hmm. okay? And imaging is in the annex. And we talked about it. We talked about that initially where we started the installation for our CT scanner, um, which is a 128 slate slice CT scanner donated to us by Maria Holder Memorial Trust. And it is a game changer. Mm -hmm. It's still in the installation stage um, because of the fact that there's several parts that are needed. And people may say, well, why is this taking long? Well. It's like the same thing. 
when you get a you get a toaster, you plug it in, you toast. When you get a TV, you got to organize it. When you go a little further, when you get your computer, you got to set it up. So imagine when you keep taking it up to different levels, there's different things that need to be done. Because once you set it up, you want it there for 10 to 15 years. So the time that it takes, this is not out of the ordinary, for the installation to be completed, for the physicist to come in to make sure that the radiation is not harmful to the staff that's working there. Once that is done and is saying you have to go ahead and people have been trained on the CT scanner, then we start. Then we start. But definitely, um, 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 we will be starting this year. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh, for sure. This month is like completing the installation as well as getting in the physicists to come in. Mm -hmm. um, for sure, for sure. And then we have GE that will provide the applications for the training of the radiographers as well as other physicians. The radiologists and other physicians need to be trained on the 128 slice CT scanner mm -hmm. because they will learn how to use all of the services. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. It's truly a game changer. If I was to ask you, Doc, not trying to put you on the spot, but um, given the fact that it is so important, um, what would be your estimation with respect to time? I would say by the first quarter of 2022. I'm not sure what, I mean, you, you're more January, February, it. March, yes. Because January was when we claimed that we're gonna complete the installation. Right. Then you need to have the physicists come in at the same time that they're doing the training. And the training will take one week that's online and then one week on site. Okay, good. And so that's another two weeks. And then you start with the whole process. So definitely mm -hmm. by the first quarter, right. it will be up and running. Okay. And and of course that would depend on on how things go with COVID and because the pandemic in, in and of itself mm -hmm. and likewise Omicron um it's a game changer likewise because mm -hmm. um as the who said it should not be taken as a mild disease Thank you. and and on top of that um because of all of the gains made um mm -hmm. still it is too early to predict what may happen in the ensuing weeks because omicron is spreading so quickly so i mean i know people may say okay well let's see what happens by by march but we need to let them know that do not forget that whereas we are we are working on on services upgrades we also have something else that is you know right there and we have to keep Moving looking at it ever so often so yeah you are exactly right now give you an example uh, this is going to go into dialysis but we have the dialysis where we're doing installation so we had it set up for our installer to come in to do the reverse osmosis that's the water and our next installer to come in to do the hemodialysis they were both to come in on Sunday, mm -hmm. yesterday. Our first install installation person came in on Sunday fine. The other one had to fly through Puerto Rico to come in, okay, because he's coming in from the Dominican Republic. He was not able to come yesterday because Puerto Rico said, we have no more PCR tests. So we cannot do your PCR test when right. you're here in time for you to travel. travel. So now he is traveling on Tuesday because they expected the test to come in today. Mm -hmm. So just like you said, he was everything was planned. This has nothing to do with his travel, nothing to do with his equipment, mm -hmm. simply what we do not have enough PCR tests right. for the number of people that need to be tested. And that's in Puerto Rico? In Puerto Rico. And one would think, okay, but well, Puerto Rico is part of the US, US mm -hmm. so they would have everything up on par. Right. So, so it just goes to actually show that, that that nothing at all you know is guaranteed with that is concerned because right. of the dynamics of the pandemic exactly doc stick up in viewers we take our first break don't go anywhere we will be back with the next chapter and remember i'm speaking with dr carol mcintosh our director of hospital services
Si lo calimé. jacuzzi um, for persons yeah. who can who want to soak a little bit um, some people the elderly sometimes have joint pain and so this is ideal so they can relax and the jets can massage their their body Grenada. count me because we all count Count all of us. Nothing about us without us. Count me. Count me. We all count too. Count me. Count me. We all count too. Count me. We are people too. Count all of us. Nothing about us without us because we all count for the coming census. Are you getting the broadband speed that you're paying for? Based on your contract as advertised, several factors may affect broadband speed, like distance from the provider's exchange to your property, the type of line to your house, or processing power of the hardware or device that you are using. To check your speed, you can use a broadband speed checker on the World Wide Web. If it's less than the advertised speed, you may be within your rights to complain to your provider. Always read your contract carefully. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Actel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back viewers, welcome to the next chapter with me Kevin Frederick and to remind you we, I am speaking this morning with Dr. Carol McIntosh and Dr. McIntosh as I explained earlier is a gynecologist by profession but she's also our director of hospital services and um, just before the break doc we were speaking about some of the, the new services and we were speaking about um, dialysis and um, we looked at how much it is important for the hospital, how much it is important for the advancement of healthcare services in Grenada. And you was making the point that, um, you know, we are about 80%, 90% there. So just, just elaborate more on this, please. Yes, yes. Um, just a, before I go on, the imaging, we do have the XR6000 digital x-ray that's in place, also waiting for the physicist. So once the physicist comes in, both of those services will start up. Okay, Doc. So let's back up. Before we touch the dialysis then, <laughs> there, there is a, a, a x-ray unit now of at Princess Royal in Cargo. Yes. Um, I know that um, Princess Alice already has it is, but that's still under repair. Right. And they have a new one that is on, on order. Good. And, and and that's why we are looking at, at possibly having its own theater and so on in the not too distant future. Exactly. And now we have also at the general hospital mm -hmm. a number of, of modern equipment 
that is x-ray as well as um, CT scan. So our diagnostic arm at all of the health center, uh, the hospital, sorry, will be um, upgraded. But likewise, mm -hmm. I know, for example, the polyclinic at Guav mm -hmm. will have um, um, that kind of equipment likewise so that mm -hmm. it can also support what's going to happen down at the general hospital and so then we we are somewhat um releasing all of that pressure and strain on the hospital and you quite correctly mentioned decentralization of services and how important is that for healthcare extremely important because you do want to have that you have a hospital that has that's a tertiary hospital so yes it has most of the major services but then you also want to make sure that you have your community and primary care services that people are taking care of outside of and not necessarily coming into the hospital because of the burden for the hospital and you know we don't have the facility that's available to say to have everybody come in so it's necessary to have services outside to support people and i say support people because it also puts the the onus back on the person. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you the services that might just be outside your door. We're going to give you those services to assist you in taking care of your diabetes and your hypertension. And if you get, if you break an arm, okay, we well, can come right here to get the x-ray and not have to come in to have it set at the hospital. But it's on you as well to say, let me see what more I can do to take care of me in conjunction with the health services that are being provided. So as we upgrade, we talk about the goal of the Ministry of Health is for best of health care to all Grenadians that's sustainable and strengthened by the health care delivery system. That means that it, for the health care delivery system includes the patient. Mm -hmm. So it is necessary that you decentralize and decentralize to the point of in your household. You do stuff that's well, that will help to keep you well. And if you're not well, then go to your community doctor and start to improve. As the discussion evolves, Doc, I'm thinking there, there's also another benefit that maybe the public does not really recognize at this time. And I'm thinking here yeah, that with the decentralization of the, the services and the availability of it at, the, for example, Caraco, yes. Peter Martinet, and, uh, and, and up at Princess Alice. It means also that your wait time for surgeries will be cut because you have minor surgeries and so on, and maybe some intermediate that can be done at both locations without the, the patient having to travel via sea to come down or air and having to wait maybe, you know, two, three months because of backlogging so it means that we are we are easing the pressure on health systems mm -hmm. and we are making life much more easy for you so your mental health yes. for example will be 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 somewhat improved because you don't have to worry but when next am i going to get this surgery okay. done mm -hmm. so the stress of 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 having that mental burden you know that can be alleviated by simply having the services decentralized and available at, at, at all, the all of the um, you know, um, secondary um, facilities. You said it exactly right. You said it exactly right. And I'm glad you said mental health, because one of the things that's being developed is to have Carlton House be built at the site of Princess Alice Hospital. Mm -hmm. And that will help with like acute medical illness or mental illness. So it is access and awareness. Access meaning, yes, you have the access at the different sites. Awareness is being available, being conscious of, well, what do I need? What do I need to go to? Mm -hmm. Because you can have access right here. This is a beautiful hospital, tertiary hospital, oncology services. But if you don't understand that that bleeding that you have, I'm gynecologist, so that bleeding that you have at 60 years of old is age is not normal. That access doesn't do much for you because you're sitting in your home and don't know. So it is access and awareness, and awareness comes from such, the show such as this, for people to hear. It comes from the nurses in the community, that when you come in, they talk about preventative care and talk to you about different things. I would say it also comes from like the nurses in the sense like our VIA nurses who are doing cervical cancer screening, 
they're there. They don't just talk about cervical cancer. They talk about everything. Mm -hmm. So you start to become aware. And then when you hear it, you go to your, well, you may not go to your barbershop, but you go to, <laughs> you go to your hairdress salon and you sit there and say, girl, I just heard about such and such. Now I'm aware. Mm -hmm. But what happens if I have that? Here's your community hospital. Mm -hmm. So it is something that, it, it gives me joy to see that. Um, you know, because I'm coming in from New York, where we got a hospital, shoot, yeah, you know, hospital like on every seven blocks. In Brooklyn, you got three or four hospitals. Manhattan, you got another four. You know, and I'm talking about hospitals. It's like one hospital with five or six different buildings, all access. But people in Brooklyn know if I want to get burn center, I'm going up to Manhattan. Right. If I want cardiac care, I'm going to Columbia. So if, if I got a gunshot, I'm going to Kings County. So we don't have it like that, but we can. And this takes time. Don't think, I hope people don't come in, come in tomorrow and tell me, well, we're the hospital. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it takes time because not only do you need to build the infrastructure, you also need to have your doctors and nurses who are trained in that. And that's where we're moving. Mm -hmm. I compliment our doctors and nurses because they're managing this the best they can. And we're having good results. So now we need to build up the, the human resources, the structure, give them the training. So now they, they can be, it's like for doctors, it's like a play toy. I got a new CT scanner, shoot, I'm going to do a whole lot more. Gynecologist, we get a hysteroscope, I love it. And uh, uh, um, it's no accident that, uh, that I, I let my viewers know that you are a gynecologist. Mm -hmm. um, for the pregnant or, or soon to be pregnant lady, you know, that lady who is home thinking about having a baby or so on, you know, and um, she lives in Mount Kuma or, you know, somewhere else. And she's concerned that, boy, what if I have complications? Do I have to go all the way to St. George? And here we know that where there will be a mini theater up at um, um, Princess Alice Hospital and all of the services are there. As a gynecologist, what would you say to that person out there? Okay, so it varies. Yes, you have the hospital, you have the services some more obstetrical and gynecological services that are closer to you that so that they will be able to treat the normal right. the everyday person and then be able to identify that person who needs to go down to the general mm -hmm. hospital because that's where you have most of your obstetricians right. there and have the full operation because even though you can do minor cases if you must do a c-section you need to be in the operating theater because right. anything can happen mm -hmm. um OBGYNs, we like to have everybody at one place because even a normal vaginal delivery can change like that. In a so you second. want to have Good. as much available. So that means you want to have the support. Yes, you can get to Princess Alice Hospital to stabilize and then get down to General Hospital. Right. Yes, you can get to Sortier St. Patrick's to pick up that there's a heart rate, get the ambulance going, call down to them to be prepared and get it down. This is what, that's why it means that it's not only having the infrastructure, but it's also having the transportation, the ambulances, and I'll touch on that a bit of making sure that we can move people. In Karakul, when I was living in Karakul, it's, it's hard because you can't say we're gonna to need to do a C-section and get to General Hospital, not happening. So you need to be able to manage this pregnant person well and know the point when you're saying, there's a higher risk of something going on, I need to get you down. Right. Right. Or, which we say it's easier, I need to get the anesthesiologists and the people up here to be available. So you start to think about that, and that's something that's within the Ministry of Health. That's where you start talking about sustainability is long term. How are we looking at that? Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not. But and it's not going to happen in three months. Right. But you can start the discussion now to start to prepare it. So when it's ready to happen, boom, it can. So it's there. Right. Doc. So I want to to come back you now to that topic. I uh, that. I always like talking about and uh, to say good morning to my good friend Dr. Gillian Bristol. I know that you're doing fine and I hope to have you on my show very, very, very soon. So <laughs> remember that's an invitation here. And Doc, as I mentioned, Dr. Bristol, I know that um she's passionate about, you know, dialysis. Exactly. And um here we are talking about um the establishment of our unit at hospital. And I mean, I, I could see you smiling under the mask. Yes. So I'm not going to even steal <laughs> your joy right now. Just flow with it. It is, it is a joy. I mean, to be able to say that you're offering not just dialysis, 
not just hemodialysis, nephrology services, which means that we take up the whole point of the person with end-stage renal disease and how do you manage? Do they need peritoneal hemodialysis or can we work them up towards the point of getting a kidney transplant? To be able to offer that is remarkable. Mm -hmm. It is remarkable. Um, it's good, but then it's also sad too that we need to offer that because our diabetes and hypertension and all the things that lead to end-stage renal disease is out of control and we get to that point. Mm -hmm. So you want to have this point of preventative care to make sure we don't get to that point. But we are here. And what the nephrology services are going to do, and I'm so impressed with the team because I'm just infrastructure is that they have the nephrologists, they have nephrology nurses, they have the doctor, they have the general, the, the biomed team as well. And Dr. Donald working with them and Dr. Bristol, who is not only the physician, but also a person who's an example of, you can still do this despite having end-stage renal mm -hmm. disease. That's a beautiful symbol. They're working together to provide the services to bring us to the point where people who have need of dialysis are able to get the three sessions per week, mm -hmm. which is the standard of care. That we're able to provide that in conjunction with our private partners. Because once we open up, we'll start to see more people who are in need of dialysis services mm -hmm. and be able to hopefully help to provide that. So at this present time, I'm so glad to start to say, um, Minister Steele, you have to give him, what do you call him? I forget the new word that they use for bump up or <laughs> okay. kudos or whatever. Yeah. For the fact that not only did he push and push and push, but we also have an addition to our services where we're going to have five units on the second floor in the annex. Mm -hmm. Four units are for general use and one unit is going to go in the isolation unit. We're setting up the installation for the hemodialysis units and the water, the, the reverse osmosis to provide for that. That's starting as of today. So by the end of this week, those will be installed. Right. Next week is when they do the clinical and the biomedical training. And that's hands-on, on-site, mm -hmm. five days a week, eight to five, Monday through Friday. Two people are flying in to do that. Mm -hmm. They'll be working on the units as well as teaching in the classroom and providing the clinical services and our biomed. And within that, which it's like, I want to do the praise dance. I want to get up and do like a little happy dance. Is that we'll have two patients who will undergo dialysis as part of the training. That's excellent. That is excellent. Yeah. That is excellent. Still, we're not saying, okay, now everybody come in. Because you still have to go through the process mm -hmm. and work it up to that point. And like I said, in support with IHS, providing services to people. So I know Minister Steele is smiling because not only did he... Do that also was able to help us to obtain additional units, mm -hmm. which are not in use yet, but are for us there to, as we start to think, what else can we do? How can we expand it? But first, first we need to start to crawl. Mm -hmm. And now we're standing up and taking that first step. Mm -hmm. But when we're ready to run track, well, we got the hurdles stuff ready for it. And, and oftentimes people will say, well, yes, you will be, you, you're doing that, but what about the the um training of our biomed staff and parts and service and, and all of that and i mean i know that 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 well knowing how you work doc i know that you always make sure that you have a a maintenance plan on the table as soon as possible because you would not want for the machine to be sitting down there for you know two three months waiting on a part so what can you tell us about the maintenance plan at this time? Well, we have the maintenance plan, and, and I have to, again, give kudos to our permanent secretary. The St. Paul is like constantly, I keep hearing in the air, well, what about the service? What about the service? What about the maintenance? We hear that. So for the dialysis, most definitely, for our hemodialysis, we have a project. The, the contract that we have is that we got the five units with service and maintenance. Okay. And they are, it's to their advantage, the company's advantage, to make sure these units stay up and running. Mm -hmm. So they don't want it to go down because they, it's a problem. So they're coming in regular and they're coming in to train. So our biomed team, they're going to be trained and certified mm -hmm. in the whole management, technical management of the hemodialysis units, as well as the peritoneal dialysis, because we're also going to provide that service. 
our nurses and our doctors as, and our clinical will also be trained as well because they need to understand the clinical aspect and the use of the dialysis units. That's part of the contract that we have with getting these units in. So the service and maintenance automatically comes. It's like when you buy a car. You want to know what's a warranty and when's my next tune-up, yeah. when's my next... We need to do that with every single piece of unit that comes in. Okay, what do we do next? So that we don't fall into that. And it's not any fault. It is not something that is wrong. It comes with time and understanding because a lot of times we get the donations and we don't have the service and maintenance that come with it. And I know uh, probably we jab for that, but it's like when you get the donation, the service and maintenance, it costs quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that, but it is worth that because when you look at the costing of it, of the piece of unit, you expect that. Like you're not going to get a Mercedes and get like a warranty for like $1,500 for the year. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing where the government is understanding that and really trying to make sure that everything, service and maintenance comes with it, which is why we say that even though we do the installation and things are started, we don't get the services yet because of the fact that we need to have the physicists come in and do some of the different things. Okay, good, good, good stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so all of this, of course, would improve access. And, um, but with improving access also comes um, responsibility for patients. Um, we have been, been, I would say, struggling to get patients mm -hmm. to understand that you have urgent care facilities, you have emergencies uh, um, facilities, likewise, what would um, be classified as a, a life-threatening medical emergency. And so sometimes we still see backlogging at our our E and E department for for you know conditions that um, can be treated at the health center. And I know that you also have an educational program tied on to all of these things moving forward. Um, how important do you think it is for, for persons to really understand that? So, for example, Gov has a polyclinic. When the polyclinic is functioning, you know that there's no need to rush to the, the general hospital mm -hmm. for a single cut. You know, that mm -hmm. can be, you know, addressed at the polyclinic. Mm -hmm. And and if, if persons don't take that information seriously and, and, and internalize it and understand that, they are also putting their life at risk by traveling all the way from Gov to come mm -hmm. down for a simple cut. You know, um, mm -hmm. um, we can continue to see backlog in 2022 and beyond. So um, um, the educational mm -hmm. aspect of it, um, uh, I would uh, imagine that is also um, something that that is all part of your plan. Right. You, you hit on it on so many points in the sense that we're trying to, like I said, decentralize and take the weight off. And we do have the problems there because we have the polyclinic, but we don't have the staff yet. Mm -hmm. So it is that people say, well, I can't go there because I need to get down to the general hospital. So we do need to increase the staff and people need to hear that and know that it's not perfectly in place yet. But the less that we say that's coming down to the general hospital allows for us to do better for those who have more serious needs. We do have the issues, again, even with our ambulances, and I want to apologize as well because you hear it in the news, you hear about our accidents, you hear about all the different things, ambulances going up and down, and we're improving upon that. And I'm very impressed with the fact that people who are drivers or even PBX are improving their training by doing their own personal training in EMT and coming in. So we're improving upon that part because you need that portion. So that when a person goes out with the ambulance, they'll be able to say, okay, we can manage this and perhaps do the first care and say, you don't necessarily need to get down to the general hospital. We can manage you here and then tomorrow you can go into the clinic. Right. So those are the different things that are there and recognizing it takes time. People think general hospital, that's where I go. The same thing for like, you know, for even like just the testing to get tested for, you know, for COVID. You don't have to come to the general hospital. You can go to your local clinic. You can call and figure out now, yes, it may take multiple calls, but you can still do that. That's less than standing on the line down at the general hospital. It's not necessary. And it takes the weight off of. And it, it gives you a chance of being able to say, I can manage this. Kara Cool cannot just jump on a boat and come down. Exactly. So they are becoming more and more self-sustainable to say, how many more services can we offer here to lighten your load of going down? So we have to have the same mindset for people in St. Andrews, for people in St. Patrick's as well. 
to be able to say, let's see how we can spread it out. And I also think that, you know what, you know, it, it gives you the opportunity to build on your relationship with your local team. So that should something happen to you after that, you know when I have Dr. McIntosh's number and she will answer my call because, you know, she is my community physician. So exactly. by, by accessing the services in your community, it helps with that relationship exactly. so that, that, that the educational aspect of managing your, your respective conditions and also, you know, even to help someone, you know, it is bumped up all the way up so that, you know, just in case of emergency, there is that relationship and there. You hit on that. And it's not only just the doctors. I have to say it's the healthcare providers, which include the nurses, because you can talk about the community, um, the community health nurses. They have their strength where if you say, you know, um, Joe Schmo came down to the hospital. Oh, I know Joe Schmo. He has, has diabetes. His sugars are like this. And I went out to see him. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. That's community health services. That's primary care services. So not just the physician, but the nurses. They understand what are some of the different things and saying, I will come out to visit with you. Yeah. They will see what's going on. And that does a lot more than coming into the hospital where we don't know what's happening in the community. So people have to start to trust That's right. that health care is not just the physician at the general hospital. Mm -hmm. Health care is your nurse in your community who is very strong, yes. who is well trained. Because I remember when we had done something back on diabetes and wound care, the doctors who came down with me were like, wow, in the States, we would be amputating these left and right. But they were, no, 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 we can manage this. So we have to learn to trust and understand health care provision is provided by doctors, nurses, even your nursing attendant, mm -hmm. who can come out and do your blood pressure and say, hmm, what's going on? Who will sit with you and look at your meals and say, you know, you need to change this. Yeah. So you're right. We have to expand it. We have to trust and allow for that. Um, you know, I do want to um, just to hit on some of the other things of, you know, the oxygen plant. Mm -hmm. That is something that is still with the World Bank and working with that. And that is something that um, I have to give our planning division at the Ministry of Health kudos for in the sense of getting together the technical people towards working towards that to develop the oxygen plant at the hospital. We will have this year the incinerator that will be up at Perseverance so we'll be able to handle our biomedical waste mm -hmm. ourselves. And that's another one that's coming in. And then one of the things that we learned, which is not medical outside, but medical inside, is appreciation of our staff. Yeah. And I'm not just talking doctors and nurses, but our staff on the ground, where we understood to say, you need to step back, we need to pause, put the patients and say, okay, you gotta wait a day, or you gotta wait a few hours. I just wanna say thank you to you. May not be able to do a lot more than that, but we show appreciation for the fact that despite COVID, which affected you as well, you came out mm -hmm. and you worked and you learned the different things that you initially, when you signed up, didn't sign up for that, but you said, I have to go out and do it. And so that's what we learned, that to say the appreciation to the person on the ground, understanding that everyone has a key component, key connection in taking care of the people of Grenada, Caracol, and P.T. Martinique is essential. And Doc, I, 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 I must say, um, you played a major part in that, in getting our cleaners Mm -hmm. up to par with COVID. Mm -hmm. I remember Inez and her team, mm -hmm. they were scared and you had to sit for them yourself and Dr. Mm -hmm. Donald, you know, and, and chat with them and everything, you know, and they really came a long way, you know, they actually um, surprised quite a number of people out there and, you know, mm -hmm. you know with all them and sometimes we overlook them as, as maids. You know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and we call them what janitors and cleaners, not understanding that they are also the heartbeat right. of the healthcare system because um, um, they prevent infection from, from spreading. And exactly. without them and the proper handling of medical waste and so on, um, you know, it's like doomsday. Exactly. You, you said that exactly right. And we do have our ups and downs. We don't have enough maids. So there are times when something may not be as clean. But I always tell people, they come in and clean twice a day. I'm wiping down my desk all the time. Mm -hmm. COVID tells you, you can't wait for the housekeeper to come, to come in. Man. You need to have your wipes wiping. You need to do your own sanitization as well because they're helping to supplement. But as you said, they rose to the occasion. They rose to the occasion, took the training, and, and sometimes they come back and say, you know, Doc, 
Um, I think you can do it like this. I'm like, okay. And that's what we need to understand in healthcare. Healthcare is not about, I say it and that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. It is the collaboration of the team because it's who is what's making this work is the team. And Doc, finally, um, so Omicron, it's here. I know that you, you, you are getting all of your teams of volunteers and so on um, mm -hmm. up and running again. Um, um, the hospital will continue to provide services as best as it can, but um, um, managing the services now because we're talking about quite a number of persons are coming down with the disease and we have to look at at our again infection control policies you know our flu clinics you know um, what do you do you mm -hmm. know and, and and how are things going with that well like i said our team is fantastic i would say dr donald has now sat and with dr charles as well to update the COVID protocol so you're right, it's all over the place and it's at our hospital. So what one of the things that we're doing, we're testing all of our hospital staff. Great. One, to see, do we have the Omicron? Do we have COVID? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you do test positive, we send you home. Right. We also follow up with you. We also have the kits available that if we have to send you home and perhaps you are have hypertension, diabetes, or as myself, a li little bit overweight, but overweight. Some of those different comorbidities that impact further when you have COVID. We give you the kit and the follow-up. Right. That's what we're doing for our staff because it's important to protect them because we can't have COVID in the hospital because our patients would um, succumb. Um, and the education, and this is again where Dr. Donald and her team um, working with the um, nursing to provide constant reevaluation re about PPEs and how do you manage the PPEs, as well as just the education about what do you do and 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 you're saying vaccination and booster now I, there's no mandatory we're just saying education and tools this is another tool to help you fight a disease just as we give you tools for aspirin we give you antibiotic etc this is another one so there should be no question about i need this because i need to protect me who in turn will protect my staff who in turn protect my patients who in turn protect my family so we're doing a lot of that. And then, as you said, teams are starting out for us to go back out into the community to do testing and vaccinations and really going to the areas where people are as opposed to having people come to us. I also want to say, I think that it's a good strategy, you know, that, that you actually do your in-house testing, you know, and assessment now. So with that, um, should we be, be hit hard yes. by, you know, you know, a surge of persons needing hospital care? At least our staff would be in a better place, you know, so they are not mm -hmm. sick, you know, they are doing fine. And um, we have the assessment as to who already has comorbidities so we can better place them in different shifts right. and manage the outcome of this whole thing. I think, you know, um, um, it's a strategy that must be commended. Yes, I, I, um, you know, our administrators as well, because like you said, we had to decentralize. We had up to upwards of 60 something patients when we had the surge in house. <laughs> Sooner we were going to be turning to the COVID hospital. Mm -hmm. So there's a point where we can't take everybody in. What happened? Princess Alice rose to the type, said, We're managing our patients. Right. Mount Gay rose to the point, we're managing. Princess Royal said, Okay, well, we got to manage mm -hmm. because we can't figure out how to get them across. This is why I give our administrators with their doctors and nurses at their hospitals saying, We will rise to the occasion. It is not just there. And when you have all of that support, this is what brought joy in, in the midst of the surge, saying, okay, you gotta come with COVID, come with it, because we got the team mm -hmm. and we got the people that's ready to help battle it. And so, yeah, there is gonna be another surge, no question. I tell people, get vaccinated, get boosters, but if you're not gonna do any of that, wear your face mask, a face mask, not a cloth mask, that doesn't work. Wear a medical face mask. If necessary, wear two. Do the twist to put it in, put it tight. Mm -hmm. Sanitize, make your cologne 70% alcohol. It smells nice, I'm liking it. Put a little, put that on. Social distance when you can. Mm -hmm. And being always conscious, let me wipe down. Always conscious, because COVID don't let up. It don't say, oh, well, let me take a break. <laughs> or let me, I just, I, you know, this mask is so tight. Uh -uh. It don't let up. Always be on point. Always be on point until 
this becomes like a regular flu because it's not going anywhere. But until it becomes that point where it is a part of us and we're able to manage, let us do the right thing or let us do the best thing we can. Doc, I want to thank you so much. I, 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 I do appreciate you being here and I, I like the note that we ended on because I was going to actually tell my viewers that notwithstanding the fact that you might be feeling healthy today or feeling good today, the fact is that you do not know if mm -hmm. and when you may contract COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And as we know, Omicron is spreading. It is easily um, mm -hmm. transmitted and mm -hmm. we need to keep our guards up and not down. And, and I always say from my experience um, with COVID-19, um, you know, I don't think many people would be as fortunate as I am. So I am, I am appealing to you all day, get vaccinated, follow the protocols, and please, you know, ignore a lot of the myths out there you know people will will do all mm -hmm. they can to distract you and discourage you but at the end of the day you have a personal responsibility to protect your life mm -hmm. and your family the most that will happen is that the person who misled you that's if they may come to your funeral and they would not have wow. a chance to visit you on the ward so i'm telling you this passionately ignore all of the negative comments and what you are hearing over there about vaccinations and COVID-19. The anti-vaxxers, they are very good at it, but you need to make that personal decision now. Mm -hmm. And if you would not get vaccinated, you need to follow the protocols, just as Dr. McIntosh laid them out. Hand sanitize, wash your hands, wear your mask, clean frequently touch surfaces, and you know, so on. Isolate yourself as best as possible, social distance, and we good to go. Doc, I want to thank you a lot again for coming. Um, and I would say that it was a lot of information that we shared here this morning. I know that our viewers are well pleased and mm. you know they are well informed. And we look forward to having you back here again on the next chapter sometime soon. Thank you, thank you. And I do want to say we're at the hospital. If you do come up, you start to see the traffic signs, etc. You will also note that we're limiting our visitors no more than 15 minutes on the floor because 15 minutes or less, less likelihood of transmission. So we're not rapid testing you unless you're going to our special floors. Our outpatient department, we really ask you to come at your appointment time so there's no clustering of people and really listen to our security that's there to help to keep everyone safe. And persons must wear their masks and sanitize. The minute you get on hospital grounds, you must wear your mask. There's no if, sense or buts. And if you have a cloth mask, we will give you a mask. Okay. People will say, what are you doing? Yeah, because not only, I'm not, I'm selfish. I'm very selfish. Because that cloth mask means you might have it and you may give it to me. So my selfishness is like, here, put this on. That's where we're going. Okay. And I have no problem with that. We want to keep everyone safe. And you're doing this and constantly saying this. This is what we need because the word has to get out there. It has to get out there. We're going to do our part while you're in. But the word gets out there. And I, and I say thank you. Thank you to you for like giving people the chance to come in and talk and to hear it. And then to also talk about what is not correct out there. Mm -hmm. Really, we always have to do that. Knowledge is power. Thank you so much, Doc. And you have a blessed week. Thank you. All right. Good. Awesome. Viewers, that brings us to the end of this week's show. See you next Monday right here on the next chapter at the Government Information Service. So long. Bye. Everything I have today is locally made.